Prior to chest tube insertion, the water seal drainage system should be assembled and placed at the bedside. Specific directions for this assembly will vary by individual device, so you should follow the manufacturer's directions. In general terms, the suction chamber is filled, as is the water seal chamber. The drainage system is attached to wall suction, and the suction is adjusted so that gentle bubbling is noted in the suction chamber. The entire device may be hung on the bedside. Refer to the written portion of this procedure for more details on water seal drainage systems. Place the patient in the supine position and select an appropriate site for tube insertion. The most common location is the mid to anterior axillary line in the fourth or fifth intercostal space. In general, the fifth intercostal space is approximately at the level of the nipple. The incision site should be lateral to the edge of the pectoralis major muscle and the breast tissue. Note that the skin incision is made over the rib that lies below the selected intercostal space. If possible, you may elevate the head of the bed to 30 to 60 degrees. This lowers the diaphragm and decreases the risk of injury to the spleen and liver. Before insertion, hold the tube beside the chest wall with its tip at the level of the clavicle. This estimates the distance the tube should be advanced from the incision site to the apex of the lung. You may place a clamp on the tube to mark the appropriate insertion distance. Next, prepare the area with antiseptic solution and apply a sterile drape. Using a 25-gauge needle, raise a wheel of local anesthetic over the selected rib. Switch to a longer 22-gauge needle and advance it through the wheel and anesthetize the deeper tissues. Direct the needle over the superior aspect of the rib, alternatively injecting anesthesia, and aspirating back on the plunger. Fluid or air will fill the syringe when the pleural cavity has been entered. Inject additional anesthesia at this point to anesthetize the highly sensitive parietal pleura. Make a 3 to 4 centimeter skin incision with a scalpel directly over the selected rib. Use a Kelly clamp to bluntly dissect a tract over the rib. Create the tract immediately over the superior surface of the rib in order to avoid the intercostal vessels and the nerve which course along the inferior surface of the rib. You will encounter firm resistance when the parietal pleura is contacted. Continue to apply firm pressure and advance the Kelly clamp through the pleura and into the thoracic cavity. Penetrating the pleura is usually the most painful portion of the procedure, and extra anesthetic or analgesia may be required at this time. To avoid penetrating too deeply, hold the Kelly clamp several centimeters from the incision site prior to puncturing the pleura. With the clamp tip in the pleural cavity, spread the clamp widely and withdraw it to make an adequate entry portal. Slide your finger over the clamp and into the pleural space, and then remove the clamp. Leave your finger in this position so that the tract is not lost prior to insertion of the chest tube. Use your fingertip to palpate the pleural cavity, and confirm that no solid organs or adhesions are present. Pass the tube along your finger, over the rib, through the intercostal space, and into the pleural cavity. If desired, you may hold the tube in a large Kelly clamp during insertion. Direct the tube posteriorly, medially, and superiorly until the last hole is clearly intrathoracic, the marker clamp that was previously attached touches the chest wall, or there is resistance to advancing. After successful passage, attach the connection tubing from the suction system to the chest tube. Several methods are available to confirm proper placement of the tube. 
If possible, slide your finger along the tube and verify that it enters the pleural cavity. Visualization of condensation inside the tube or free return of pleural fluid or blood suggests proper placement. In all cases, a chest radiograph should be obtained to serve as the definitive assessment of tube placement. Various methods of securing the tube are available, and local institutional protocol should be followed. One practical method includes placing a horizontal mattress suture one centimeter across the incision on either side of the tube. Secure this stitch with a simple knot that can be untied so that it can be opened and retied to close the incision after the tube is removed. After securing the tube, place an occlusive dressing over the entry site. Refer to the written portion of this procedure for more details on aftercare and troubleshooting.